Okay, right, so first thing to do is to remove the central screw. When removing the central screw, we must make sure that we retain a small washer here. Sometimes it won't come out on the screw here, it'll remain inside the valve. Do not lose this, as otherwise it has a it is very important for sealing. So safe storage on the screw. Next we pull the lever off, put that to one side. Now I need to remove the dial plate. Grab screw here under the word off. One turn will be sufficient to lift that off, just to one side. Now we have the main cover here with seven screws. These are decorative, don't need to be removed. Removing the dial plate has revealed the hidden grub screw. Use the two and a half Allen, millimeter Allen key to one turn is sufficient to remove the head cover. place to one side. Now we're going to move to the vise because we need to remove this item here. But before we remove that we should ensure the valve is in a fully open position so just place the lever on and turn it to the fully open position. Okay. Moving to the vise, clamp the valve in on this area here which is the mount where the mounting ring is which is now left on the wall or in the wall. Count that in the vise. Actually it might be a little over it's just Taking wipe. an adjustable spanner undo the main headwork. We remove the headwork from the valve. And also at this point remove the thermostatic capsule. Note that it has a black end, this is the end that moves, this is the fixed end and temperature sensing end. Remove it, turning the valve over. Come to the back port. The back port has a large screwdriver slot, which we use a large screwdriver. Alternatively, a very, very useful tool because it fits this slot perfectly is a 50 pence piece. Yeah. This is the back cap. There is the pressure spring. From underneath I, where the thermostatic was, we can now push out the blending shuttle. That's now completed the disassembly of the valve. Okay, so we need to clean up our components. Having replaced the O-ring internally here, we need to clean the components. Clean the outside of this shuttle. This is Teflon coated so that uh, detritus doesn't stink to it. Just make sure there's no dirt on here. You should note that this is sprung. There it is and is meant to move freely. This is to compensate for the main spindle. The spring inside is here. It's quite tough, quite a hard spring. Much harder than the main spring that's behind it. Then having made this nice and clean and it's greased, we put that back into its O-ring seating down to the bottom. Set it about in the valves, make sure it goes to the bottom. Take the main spring, place the main spring in the centre there. 
the back cap. There are two grooves. The rear one is just for clearance, the front one carries the new o-ring and must be replaced. The o-ring on the face here is not replaced. Just make sure it's clean and smooth. The backpack pin, you notice it, it wobbles because it sits down. Press down evenly with your two thumbs to lock it into the thread. Now, very important, it, as you turn this down it's easy and then suddenly it starts to go stiff. As it goes stiff that means that o-ring on the outside is now engaging in the seal point. Lights, camera, action, yes. So turn this down a couple of turns. Now comes the tricky piece. We turn over, and this is where the, the thermostat sits in here. What we will be doing is measuring, me moving this with our thumb to see how much motion we have. And what we are looking for is to reduce the motion <coughs> to almost nothing and we're doing that by screwing in the back cap. So we turn it in half a turn at a time and refeel that motion. It's almost gone. Another quarter of a turn or so should see the motion removed. Yeah, the motion's gone. The only motion that is present now when I press down here is when the main spring goes, the secondary spring that I showed you earlier. Now we're free to undo the back cap three quarters of a turn to set the chamber size. Now, already depicted there's a letter H stamped by the hot inlet. Now the label, if it hasn't been removed, should now have its hot pointer pointing at that to give you a guide but don't accept this because the label may have fallen off or been removed and replaced incorrectly before you've got to the valve. Having done so we now have the correct approximately one millimeter motion between of that uh, piston which of course is controlling both hot and cold. There is an o-ring positioned here Make sure that it remains in place, or is in place. Put the thermostatic back in, copper end down. If you're buying, if you're on the second kit, you will have got a brand new one of these. You need to go down the centre of the spindle with your screwdriver down here and turn it till you engage in the screwdriver slot. The screwdriver slot we will see is rotating this component here in the middle and turn it anti-clockwise until it stops with this in the fully open position. That has now set the headwork up to the maximum temperature. Now screw this back in to the valve. Body. doesn't need to be massively tight, just tight. Next stage of the operation is to place the main cover back on. Now remember the main cover has a grub screw. Do not place this at the bottom. Place this off to one side anywhere but not facing to the bottom. Lock it on with the, the Allen key doesn't again need to be tight. The dial plate goes on with the word off towards the bottom and we nip it on. The lever will go on, uh, to just lightly put it on, turn it till it's in off position, happens to be in the right place, press down, all the way down. Make sure that is still got its O-ring in position. Do it in. 
Now, here's very important. Open the valve again and tighten this until it turns the lever. That is tight enough. You can just go and give it a little tiny pull just to make sure it is perfectly tight. Otherwise, you will break that screw. And that causes a whole lot of problems. The only other things to check on this valve are its inlets on the inlet of both hot and cold or non-return valves. Should these need replacing, you will need a half inch AF Allen key, like this, quite a big one. Place it in the valve. Undo in the normal sense. check valve is a one-off only, it will have to be broken to be removed. You just bash it out from here and you slide a new one in. Make sure that it is free to operate, nice and free. And then screw it back in. It is essential check valves are in there, there to prevent cross flow between hot and cold. Regardless of the water system fitted, they are required. nice and tight. The job is done.